Now, the National University Health System has received a $6.4 million boost to help it delve deeper into artificial intelligence for healthcare and improve medical efficiency and patient outcomes. Spotting and preventing medical problems early, such as back pain, is far cheaper and more efficient than catching them late. Back pain is a major healthcare issue that affects three in four Singaporeans in their lifetime. Patients with a debilitating condition currently undergo 20 minute MRI scans of their spines to locate the cause. And every year, about 67,000 such scans are performed. But with artificial intelligence, the time taken for such scans to generate reports can be halved. Riding on that promise, a $50,000 funding was given to the National University Hospital to take the technology further. The project is currently in its research stages. We are looking to move into fracture detection, which is very important because these fractures can push in and narrow the spinal canal. Fractures could be related to osteoporosis, where you get uh, weakening of the bone over time, or you get deposits in the bone from a cancer, which we call a metastasis. Another promising AI project aims to deliver health care to patients in the comfort of their homes. With a $5 million grant, NUHS hopes to develop in just two years a device that measures a vital signs like the heart rate and blood pressure and an additional function for the patients to communicate with their doctors remotely. Our initial intent was to provide this particular device to patients who have high care needs, uh, especially the patients with uh, diabetes, hypertension or complications of these diseases and hopefully we can transact up to 40 50 percent of their care at home rather than them coming to the hospital or coming to the polyclinic. Plans to include a health coach function on the device are also in the pipeline. This will help patients stay healthy when their nutrient intake and exercise options are personalized. And for more on AI and how it's changing up the healthcare industry, we're joined by Dr. Ngiam Ki Yuan. He is the Group Chief Technology Officer from the National University Health System. And Dr. Feng Meng Ling, he is Assistant Professor from the NUS Sosui Hock School of Public Health. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ngiam, maybe I'll start with you. Uh, we heard from you a little bit earlier, providing us a snapshot of what these um, AI projects really aim to do. Uh, but perhaps you can give us the broader context. What is AI doing currently at the moment uh, in our healthcare system? Um, at this point, I think we have the, the technology has reached a level of maturity that allows us to deploy them at, on a trial basis. We are really trying to find out how really efficacious these uh, AI tools are at actually helping doctors deliver better care to our patients. So, uh, I mean, how far are you from making this a reality? Still in the trial phase? Yes. How long between now? I think we have to be, be a bit careful about what we, we say can or cannot yeah. do. There's a lot of hype around AI. Um, we just have to be very sure that when we actually launch these AI tools in clinical practice, um, they are well validated yeah. and trusted by not just um, patients, but by doctors who want to um, take the suggestions from these AI tools and help right. deliver better care. To I, our I think that's yeah. perhaps what John was asking. Yeah. Yeah. Are we talking about incremental improvements in the healthcare? Are we talking about really uh, overhaul and a change in the way the healthcare system works? No, absolutely. I, I think we are, we are talking about a complete rethink of how we approach healthcare. So take, for example, waiting times, right? Instead of waiting longer, what if you didn't need to come in in the first place? Yeah. You could have telehealth consultations at home. So that's a complete rethink of how we want to deliver care to our patients. Mm. So Dr. Feng, uh, we understand that you've commercialized or you're trying to commercialize a uh, $1.35 million project. Um, so it's, specific, it's an AI tool that specifically uh, involves uh, detecting cancers uh, in the breast. Uh, give us a sense of how that works. Sure, sure. Um, so it's a project in collaboration with NUH. Uh, my, my lab developed a tool called Fandom Memo. It's actually an AI tool can uh, just read on digital mammograms and help to diagnose breast cancer. So we envision our tool can become an assistant to our human radiologists uh, who, who can uh, do the first cut readings for the radiologists where it can automatically detect cancerous tissues from the mammograms, help our radiologists to draft a preliminary report based on their findings and even suggest some diagnosis. Uh, from, from our study, we found that like over 
percent of time, the radiologic actually agrees with the recommended diagnosis from AI, and that can potentially cut down the current 20 to 30 minutes uh, reading time to just a couple of minutes. In addition, uh, our AI very different from traditional tools is that you actually have this continuous learning capability. Mm. So every time you make a mistake, it will proactively upon the human experts for corrections and teachings. And over time, it will get smarter and smarter and more efficient and more accurate in diagnosing mm. breast cancer. So we do see that uh, can augment the current workload and improve the, both the productivity and efficiency in breast cancer detection. So the accuracy rate right, right now is about 70%. Uh, we're trying to increase that at some point in the future? Oh, uh, this, the current uh, force rate is about 9 over 100. Mm. Uh, we are aiming to reduce that uh, uh, at least half, half the average with the AI too. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Nyam, uh, for you, you're obviously very excited about yes. these developments. Uh, I'm wondering, can you give us some examples, specific ways in which this AI has changed the way you work as a doctor? I think one of the key things that we have done in the last year is to discover how the AI tools actually influence the way doctors think. And uh, we want to see if the AI tools actually improve the way doctors make decisions. So one of the efforts that we have done in the past year is to run a, a trial at mm -hmm. the NUH emergency department to determine if these AI help us actually improve the way doctors make diagnoses of conditions of mm -hmm. patients turning up to the ANA. So, so what we found was that the machine alone was not as good as the doctor, but ah. the doctor and the machine performed better. Mm -hmm. So I think that was, a, that was one of the key uh, things that we were trying to discover through our trial and that kind of reinforces the fact that we want to augment our doctors rather than just replace them for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just to build on what Dr. Niam has said, I mean it's clear that there are advantages with man and machine working together Yes. Um, but adoption is not what at, at a stage that, that many would, would like. Uh, what are some of the, the pain points or, or challenges that you see um, in terms of adoption rates and, and for AI in particular? Um, yeah because Currently, most of the AI solutions are still quite a black box solution. That means is that although it can be very effective in performing a certain task, we, we, the most often we can't really explain like how they did it or, or behind what are the reasons that they make certain decisions. So this is definitely not ideal, especially not for healthcare, because uh, it can be very difficult to convince doctors and patients mm -hmm. to adopt a new AI technology while we can't explain. So in the future, I do see that we can have more breakthroughs in terms of research, that we, we can start to understand how AI works and how exactly they make the decision and start to or eventually open this black box uh, of AI. Mm, clearly still uh, much to be done on this front. Thanks very much, gentlemen, for coming in and speaking with us. We've been speaking there with Dr. Nyam Ki Yuan, Group Chief Technology Officer from the National University Health System, and Dr. Feng Mengling. He is Assistant Professor from the NUS Sosui Hock School of Public Health.